overlooking from space, China appears as a three-step terrain. The first step starts from the Greater Hinan Range to the low altitude plain and hill region in the east of the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau. The second step expands across the Mongolian Plateau, the Luasis Plateau, and Yunnan Guizhou Plateau and Xinjiang. The third step ascends to the Tibetan Plateau with an elevation of over 4,000 meters, which is known as the Roof of the World. From plain to highland, from tropical to cold temperate climate, from sea level to 8,848.86 meters above, which marks the highest point on Earth. The complexity of geographical and climatic conditions gives rise to a large diversity of vegetation and ecology in China. For 5,000 years, the Chinese people prosper for generation after generation. multiplying the diversity of plant species on this land, either through human efforts or naturally. Increasing green space, migration of lakes and rivers, and numerous other changes that happen to the land of China do not alter the fact that green is still the key color. In the last decades, the green transformation in China, which is visible from outer space, has created the most magnificent hue on Earth. Behind these amazing colors are countless stories about green ecology in China. The Greater Hing'an Range, extending across northeastern China, is a forest region that stretches over 1,400 kilometers with a width of approximately 200 kilometers. This forest zone is one of the best preserved and the largest in China. The Plain and River Valley that run through it, together with the meadow and forest, have created a complete ecological cycle in this region. Situated in the Greater Hing'an Range, Genghe City of Inner Mongolia has a forest area of 18,400 square kilometers. Influenced by cold temperate continental monsoon climates, it once broke the record for China's lowest temperature at minus 58 degrees Celsius. It is called China's Pole of Cold. For centuries, people have lived in a company with the forest. Throughout all seasons, the fruity yield of the forest always rewards them with what they deserve. There are nine forest farms under Genghe Forestry Bureau. Pang Yanjun is a long-term employee there. He still remembers vividly the logging scenes some 20 years ago. At that time, Genghe Forest Farm was a big forest farm in northeast China, with more than 21,000 employees. For a long time, logging has been the most traditional and significant industry there, a city inhabited with around 100,000 people. Everyone is somehow related to the forest farm. Exploitation over the past few decades has caused something unexpected by Pang Yanjing and his colleagues, a decline in forest in the Greater Hing'an Range. China has carried out national forest protection project since 1998. Logging in primeval forests was strictly prohibited in the Greater Hing'an Range, including the Genghe Forest Farm. Pan Yanjun and his colleagues turned from loggers into forest rangers and plantation workers. As the Chinese saying goes, unique features of a local environment always give special characteristics to its inhabitants. Everything is destined. A logger can turn into a forest ranger or plantation worker. This seemingly contradiction is therefore somehow justified. A vast landscape with varied geographies and climate in different regions and diversified vegetation distribution 
fosters a multiplicity of plant species in China. A single color of green can create different shades of brilliant colors. The Greater Hing'an Range is an icon of China's primeval forest. Heading some 3,300 kilometers southwestwards from Genghe, we arrive at Damson County of southwest China's Tibet Autonomous Region, a natural meadow with the highest altitude in the world, and a precious pasture on the snow plateau in the third pole of the earth. Damson means the selected pasture in Tibetan. It is crowned as the green carpet in paradise. With an altitude of some 4,200 meters, there sit the Yanshan Tangla Mountains with an average altitude of over 6,000 meters. The boundless grassland and the villages lying at the foot of the mountains are home to more than 20,000 Tibetan herders. One morning, the shepherds of La Gan village, Tsring and Choki Wozer prayed piously, raising the curtain of a remarkable day. Lagan village belongs to Guangtown Township in Damson. It is where the Qinghai Tibet Railway and the Qinghai Tibet Highway pass through. Inhabited by over 1,000 people, the village boasts a meadow as large as 220,000 mu, and tens of thousands of herds like horses, cattle, and sheep. In the past, the meadow was under constant disruption. Fragile grass in the extreme cold is gazed by tens of thousands of cattle and sheep. Without proper protection, desertification often occurs. In case of drought, blizzard, and other extreme weather, the number of herds drops drastically, and the meadow is massively disrupted. Alternating pastures for herding between winter and summer is an ancient tradition of the nomads, a conclusion based on hundreds of thousands of years of shepherd experience. To allow adequate recovery of the precious green pasture and to avoid overgrazing, the local villagers divide the winter and summer pastures into smaller parts. Summer pasture is divided into east and west pastures. Winter pasture is divided into north and south pastures. Cattle and sheep from different families are grouped together for herding in order to protect the pastures and to alleviate the problems of overgrazing. Departing since dawn, the yaks graze along the way, moving only three kilometers the whole morning. Luckily, Sri and Choki Wozer were not in a hurry. They can take the time to inspect the growth status of the winter pasture. The alpine wetland is the essence of Damsung County. The grass type is also the most precious species in northern Tibet. Thanks to the herding break and the nourishing snow water from the high mountains, the alpine pastures grow exceptionally well in 2020. A profusion of flowers in bloom reflects its poetic beauty as a green carpet in paradise at Damsun on Qinghai Tibet Plateau. Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, China Keqiang in Aksu Prefecture, northwest of China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, also belongs to the extremely fragile region of the ecological environment. This is the world's second-largest shifting sand desert, at the north edge of the Taklamakan Desert. It was once a barren ravine. Through the villagers' efforts for several years, 
it has now become a prosperous and fruity forest. To 2019, a total of 1.153 million mu of artificial forest has been developed in Kakia. The oasis orchard here is renowned as a green bank in Gobi Desert. Ganquan, Shanxi Province. It is part of the Low Hill and Gali Loasis Plateau in northern Shanxi. Exposed to yellow soil flows into the Yellow River under the rain. Enormous quantity of silt has caused many catastrophes in history. Facing severe shortage of water resources on the Loas Plateau, the drought-stricken land can hardly nurture a natural forest. To pursue his long-cherished dream, Chen Heping changed from a farmer to a forestation staff. He only did one thing in these 30 years. He planted and conserved the broad-leafed forest. Only he knows the hard work and perplexity behind. Day after day, Chen Heping has turned his green dream into pious faith. Out of the yellow earth near the Yellow River, he built such an exquisite green forest. Departing from the zigzagging Yellow River, we travel 600 kilometers to Yichang, Hubei, through which Yangtze River meanders. The Three Gorges Dam is situated here. It is the most significant hydropower complex project in China. Since 2003, the Three Gorges Reservoir has been involved in the impoundment and hydropower generation for more than 10 years. The Three Gorges Reservoir has played an essential part in flood control of Yangtze River region and hydropower generation. Trash from upstream is no longer a big issue after being processed. But the debris piles up on the shores will still affect the ecological balance along the coast. A professional barber in Yichang, Li Yanbang, is the initiator of the Association of Ecological Protection of Middle and Lower Reach of Yangtze River. In 2013, he and his friends traveled to the Three Gorges Reservoir region and found the beautiful water lined with trash. After coming home for a few days, he still could not forget about it. He waited till weekend and brought some bean bags with him to start his journey of clearing the trash. That is how his actions moved the people in Three Gorges. The number of cleanup volunteers grew from 1 to 100, then to 10,000 and 20,000. In the past seven years, the Association of Ecological Protection of Middle and Lower Reaches of Yangtze River has become a charity platform for generous people in Yichang and nearby places. They have organized more than 700 voluntary cleanup events, each of which deposes tons of waste. Presently, these volunteers for environmental protection have started to plant trees and flowers on the barren land of the Three Gorges Reservoir region. They wish to make the Three Gorges where they live in a scenic and vibrantly green place and to restore its ecological balance. Going upstream from Yichang, we have moved from the middle and lower reaches to the upper reach of Yangtze River. Jiang'an in Sichuan province is a green city set within the ecological group of Yangtze River. Most people do not know that this small county at the edge of Sichuan Basin is China's largest producer of Chinese cedarwood, or Phoebe Zhenan. Thanks to the warm and humid climate in Sichuan Basin, a large diversity of plants can be found here. 
It is an ideal place for the Phoebe Gem Nun to grow. Phoebe Gem Nun is a kind of nemu of very rare species, which grows very slow, and takes sixty to ninety years to become lumber. Nemu was generally used in the construction of royal Chinese palaces in ancient times. The wood has a pleasing scent and dense texture that makes it a quality material for architecture and furniture. So, it also has the reputation of the tool and pillar of the country. Liu Wei is an employee of Jiang'an Forestry Administration. To protect these precious tree species, he and his colleagues formed a patrol team. They inspect the Phoebe Jiangna in the area and to take thorough registrations. In case of theft or loss, they will work with law enforcement departments. Based on clues collected, to track down the original party, they will not relent in the face of greedy illegal loggers. In addition, Liu Wei and his colleagues are also responsible for the transplantation and cultivation of the Phoebe Jiangna to leave the hope for younger generation and to make Phoebe Jiangna no longer scarce are his biggest wishes. As the scope of perseverance and plantation of Jiangan Phoebe Jiangna expands, the ecological cycle of mountains and forests, water and earth, animals and plants will become better. Yangtze River and the Earth both require the protection by different tree species. Leaving the dense rolling mountains at the edge of Sutran Basin, we leap over the Hongduan mountain range where the three parallel rivers flow through and enter the Qinghai Tibet Plateau in China. This hinterland of plateau has an average elevation of 4,000 meters. It is also the most fragile region of ecological environment on Earth. Plants can hardly survive here. Lao Chong, a professor of botany from Tibet University, is seeking an endangered highland plant named Macronopsis torquota that only exists on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. The team of Professor Lan Chung is working hard on the resurrection of the endangered plant. Due to geographical factors, the plants in the Qinghai Tibet Plateau have strong primitivity. Their cells store archaic genetic information. Preserving these precious seeds is retaining the hope of biodiversity for the future of Earth. To collect these seeds, La Chong and his team almost track across the entire roof of the world. In 2019, Professor La Chong's team issued an essay in the U.S. Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The study provides new research clues to the molecular mechanism of plants adapting to the extreme environment on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. Seeds are the hope of humankind. Rescuing the plants in Plateau is to a certain extent saving the Earth's future. From the first to the third step, from the ocean to the peak of the Earth, there is a group of responsible ordinary people behind a green China, preserving and working towards their dreams.